it's a pleasure uh, talking to all you guys. My name is Tim Deep. I'm the customer success manager for DC Cap. Uh, been with the company for about eight years now, and um, you know, just doing a lot of coordinating uh, <clears throat> events for the ecosystem. Um, like to bring you know a lot of the technology partners and merchants and distributors together, just so we could really uh, iron out all the details of you know what it takes to be really successful for e-commerce. So, and usually we have big events called DC Cap Summit, and that's when we we bring the whole community. But in regards to this one, this one is specifically called the e-session. So it's more of a, a case study and walkthrough. Uh, today, you're going to be hearing from Kendall and Alec in, re in regards to, um, you know, what it took for them to migrate over to the Magento 2 website, also integrating with the P21, uh, Epicor P21 um, ERP system. So, uh, yeah, and, you know, if you guys want to do any sharing or anything, uh, the official hashtag for our for this session will be called DC Cap E sessions. So very, very simple and straightforward. So, and if you look on the bottom too, um, there's going to be a Q and A um, button. So if you have any questions for any of the speakers, go ahead and just type in a, a question there. You can also type on on the chat. But if you do on the chat, just make sure that you send it to everybody. Sometimes it'll it'll go privately to either myself or just to the panelists. You know, just for everybody to know what's what the question is. Um, you know, be sure to send it to everybody. So attendees and all registrants. So, and uh, first off, you know, I'd love to thank all the sponsors. So we have Nexus, uh, you know, a hosting solution uh, for all the e-commerce platforms. So Nexus will be here and then punch out to go. So Brady, you know, you'll be hearing uh, from Brady on the discussion panel later today. And of course, DC Cap. So, um, you know, looking forward to really showcasing um, some, some expertise and some knowledge for you guys in terms of for e-commerce. So the first session that we have is, is called Magento 2 Migration and P21 Integration for Business Transformation. So pretty much gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up Alec Daniel from, uh, from, from Moody Price and Kendall Ducote from, in, from um, uh, Moody Price as well. So Alec, he's a digital marketing designer at Moody Price and has operated within that role for about two years now, over two years now. He has helped with the development and implementation of company-wide digital improvements, including email marketing, SEO, and local SEO, social media platforms, data analytics, and account-specific targeting. And then we also have Kendall Ducote on, um, he's the VP of technology at Moody Price, and he has been managing their Profit21 installation for the last tw 12 years now. In that time, he has implemented e-commerce platforms, Epicor's B2B seller, AmeriCommerce, Epicor's ECC on Magento 1, and now Magento 2 with DC Cap. So I'd like to bring to the stage Alec, Alex and uh, Alec and Kendall. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction, Tim. All right, well, this is a, uh, a quick screenshot of our homepage. Um, and appreciate the introduction. As he mentioned, uh, I'm the Vice President of Technology at Moody Price. Uh, we've been using P21 since 2008. Uh, we're an industrial distributor that focuses mainly on instrumentation products. And we're spread out across the Gulf region from Odessa, Texas, to the Panhandle of Florida and up through Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, we went live on Epicor's B2B seller shortly after we went on P21. It was part of our installation package. And um, so uh, part of our installation package and we went live with them back in uh, 2008 in the middle of a hurricane. And that was an interesting scenario. And as, like I said, as part of our installation, we went live with B2B seller. It was our first e-commerce uh, attempt that we, prior to that, it was just a simple single page website. Um, we ran that for a few years, learned a lot. Uh, from there, we moved on to AmeriCommerce, which was a disconnected e-commerce solution. Everything was moved back and forth through, um, through imports and exports. There was no integration, but it did allow us to create some things such as uh, search engine optimization, um, allowed us to configure product group pages and more of a marketing side for the website that the B2B seller just didn't support at all. And then from there, we got 
we had grown the business quite a bit from the e-commerce side and the imports and exports got a little bit too big to, to handle. So that's when we started looking into going back integrated. ECC was a new product uh, from Epicor. Uh, we joined on then with the hopes of the, it was sold to us as one throat to choke. Uh, the problem was we ended up wanting to choke it quite a bit. Um, we learned a lot with that integration as well. Uh, web technologies have progressed quite a bit from when we initially went live with B2B sellers. So we were able to get exposed to more of the modern web look and feel. And then we run into the limitations of what ECC could do for us and uh, the limitations of progressing our SEO footprint and the pain points of trying to make changes after the fact were, were, were significant. So from there, we moved on to DC cap and we went live in March of 2020. Uh, moodyprice.com is our domain. If you'd like to go check out our site after the presentation. Um, so I'd like to cover a few things uh, for the group here, share some of our experiences, what worked well, um, things that we've learned, and hopefully give some of you guys some insight on what you could expect if you chose to go down the same road that we did. Uh, I'm gonna go over some of the motivations that we had for moving from ECC over to, uh, to DC Cap go over some of the core requirements that we had for our site. So you get a little, a little bit of a feel for some of the things that we were looking for uh, with DC cap that we were struggling with, with ECC. Ultimately, why we chose DC cap and I'll give a brief overview of how our implementation went. It, it's not going to be very detailed, more of a highlight of how this implementation differed uh, from other implementations that we've done in the past. And then I'll let Alec go over some of the design and SEO aspects of our new website and the site performance. Primary motivation to start looking uh, for another e-commerce platform is the sunset of Magento One, which anyone who is on ECC is going to be faced with or if you're on Magento One with a different integration, I uh, believe the sunset was supposed to be this month. I haven't heard anything uh, recently if the latest COVID or anything has extended that. But that was one of our driving forces. We knew we were gonna have to move. And so we took a step back to make sure we were selecting uh, the platform and the partners that were gonna be the most effective and made the most sense for us. Another driver was the high cost of ECC subscription. Um, we were, our, I'm sure every implementation is, is going to be different, but we were actually able to cover the cost of our Magento 2 build uh, with a ROI of just the savings from ECC to less than two years. Another issue we were having with ECC was the inefficient and expensive development cost. As many of you may or may not know, uh, with Epicor, you're usually tied in directly to a company called Silk that is responsible for all of the design portion. Uh, but there's no one at Epicor that understands design. So anything that you need to change or want to configure, you have to submit a case in to Epicor, who then turns around and rephrases that case to Silk, who then somebody gets in touch with you from Silk, and then you give the requirements, and then they're going to give a quote, but you can't get the quote from Silk, the, the quote for the amount of hours and the amount of time and uh, how much it's going to cost has to funnel back through Epicor because it's ultimately billed from Epicor. It's just, a, it was a very frustrating uh, path to get support and enhancements done. Another large driver we have is something called punch out. Uh, if you're not familiar with punch out catalogs, if you have large customers, uh, it's coming if it's not already there. It is a way to leverage your website 
and tie it into the customer's procurement system. And I'll give a little bit more information on that in just a second. Um, the gist of it is it replaces the shopping cart on your website. Customer goes in, they throw items into their cart, um, quantity, item, price, and when they go to check out, instead of it actually prompting you for a credit card, it returns all of those items and all the information and, and all the uh, quantities and prices that are in the shopping cart back into their procurement system. Most commonly with us, it's Ariba and Coupa and SAP. Uh, it looks just like our website. It works like our website. The search works like our website. It's, it's a tailored session for that customer um, that changes up the checkout process for them. We have one of our largest customers um, who had a requirement for us to begin using it. And up until this point, we had not embraced it fully. And moving away from ECC into another Magento 2 implementation was going to give us the chance that we were looking for to integrate punch out from the ground up and not as an afterthought. Now, here's a slide from punch out to go They are the vendor that we use, and you'll hear from Brady in a little while, um, that we use to help us configure the Punch-Out integration with Profit21 for us. And you can see this is a little busy showing all the ins and outs and the, and the flows that go in. So I, I, I simplified this a little bit into a single slide that may be a little bit easier to understand if you're not familiar with Punch-Out. The customer starts a session within their procurement system. And within Ariba or Coupa or within SAP, they see a window that looks exactly like our website. It is our website. It's a version of our website. But there's enough customization within that session to control how the checkout works for that customer. So they put those items in their cart, the checkout returns it back to their procurement system, such as Ariba. And then we receive the PO from Ariba and bring that back into P21. So it really streamlines the process for those larger customers that have this capability. And I think the uh, price to entry on this has come down quite a bit where I think we're going to start seeing this more and more with even smaller customers. So that, that, that's one of the driving forces that we had here that we wanted to integrate up front. Some of the other uh, core requirements we have, obviously, is the P21 integration. With our AmeriCommerce site that we had, without the integration, it was it, it, it's entirely too difficult to manage, and uh, it's, it really was not an option for us at this point our, with our growth of e-commerce business. Another requirement we had was robust site search. Um, it's a real limitation that we had with Magento 1 and all of our earlier websites. The latest technology is called Elasticsearch, which actually requires its own separate server instance with your hosting. Uh, it's very inexpensive. I think we pay roughly around $20 a month, I think, for the, for the instance that we use for our Elasticsearch. But it takes the search capabilities that most customers are used to with an Amazon-like experience with suggestions and did you mean and this product goes with and uh, complete customization of the of the site search separate from Magento. And that was one of our core requirements that we had to make sure that our part numbers, which are can be very complicated with dashes and spaces and inch marks and so forth, uh, to make sure customers could find the products that they were looking for. We had to have a system that was going to dynamically price for our customers that were registered on the website. Again, this is um, this is this could potentially be a big hurdle for any installation that it does not have a dedicated middleware uh, to talk with P21 and to do it quickly to calculate real-time pricing for customers that are logged in with ECC. We had something similar, except even the base pricing was being calculated real time, which was a, it was a real drag on performance. Um, 
And with the integration we did with DC Cap, we were able to go through and actually static price all of our items based off of a P21 pricing library. And then we have a job that runs once a week that goes back in and reprices those static prices based off of the current pricing library that's set up in P21. We wanted our customers to be able to go in and approve quotes. We wanted the integration to use our Avalara tax integration that we already had in P21. So we didn't want to have to go back in and recreate all of our tax rules with the Avalara integration with Magento 2. We're able to use our same Avalara account for all of our sales tax calculations on the website. We wanted to make sure we could flag our P21 customers that were already tax exempt um, onto the website. So we didn't have to try and manage that process separately. And another issue we had run into with the last two or three years is customers who are checking out online on our website that are tax exempt, but there's no way other than a note on the order to say they're tax exempt. And then they would submit the online order. We would receive it in. Then after we would get it into P21 and begin processing it, we would receive an email from them saying, hey, we're tax exempt. Please remove the tax off of this order. So what we wanted to do with our new implementation was to implement some methodology to where customers could actually upload their tax exemption certificate as part of the checkout process. This was a... Uh, really we should started off as an idea of what would work best for us. And it turned into a customization from DC cap into Magento that works flawless. Now we receive probably two dozen orders in the last two months that are, uh, that are supplied with both the order information and the tax exemption certificate information whenever it's actually brought into P21. So it skips that entire step of trying to fix an order after the fact. Another wish list item that we had that actually has turned into more of a requirement was the need for a product information manager or a PIM, if you've heard the term. It gives us a single point of management of all of our items that we have for sale, both on the website and within P21. Some of these items are not even on our website, but with P21, there's very limited storage by default for things such as attributes and uh, rich product data like PDF cut sheets or images or CAD drawings. P21 does not handle that very well natively. So the PIM gives us an intermediary step that loads the product data from P21 to get things like part numbers, descriptions, weights. But then it also gives us another place where we can store these cut sheets and CAD drawings and attribute data such as uh, specific sizes or dimensions or pressure ratings that become searchable once they are inside of the Magento portal. And our last requirement was not only did we want to implement punch out, but we wanted to implement it in a way that was going to work best for our customers. Natively in most punch out integrations, you're limited to the items that are on your website for the customer to choose from in order for them to use in their punch out integration. Our business is such where we have a lot of one time purchase items, what we call buyouts. These are items that are it's not something we would normally stock or sometimes ever stock, but the customers requested it from us as part of a larger order. So we'll take the task of procuring that item and adding it to the order for them. But that item would never be on our website. Another instance of that would be engineered products where we have things such as radar level meters. These things are calibrated and have so many different possible configurations that an individual part for an individual customer is going to have an individual part number. Again, doesn't lend itself to going through and adding it to our website because it would only ever be purchased by this one customer this one time. 
So we needed a way for customers to be able to punch those out through the punch out process without them being on the website. And what we come up with was a way for the punch out process to read a P21 quote instead of relying on the shopping cart itself. This allowed us to present to the customer any item that we have in P21 and they could retrieve that item by retrieving the quote where that item lives. And whenever they would click the punch out button, instead of using the shopping cart to transfer the list of items and quantities and prices, we're actually using our P21 quote to load that data back into their procurement system. So we had all these requirements and wants in our wish list, and now we had to find a vendor who could take care of all of it for us. So we started down the path. We, I think we had a short list of about three to four um, partners that we were looking to choose from. What set DC Cap apart from the others that we looked at? One, they had already had a solid reputation in the P21 users group. The middleware that they were in uh, implementing, the uh, Chloris, when we watched the demo with DC Cap, it, it is very robust. It's very easy to use. It is much easier to understand than the native Profit 21 middleware. And it gives a nice web interface for moves, ads, and changes. You don't need to know how to program in, in, in HTML or PHP or JavaScript or any other language in order to make changes and configuration uh, updates within the middleware. They looked at all of our customization wants that we had and come back to us with a commitment. Some of these they had actually never done, but they had looked at it from a high level and made a commitment that they would make it work for us. And that was huge, uh, especially with the punch out to go implementation, because at this point, all we had was a concept of using a profit 21 quote. And there was a big gap from me, um, from a technology standpoint of a quote in Profit 21 and a requisition in the customer's procurement system and how to make those, the bridge that gap was beyond uh, my skills from a technology standpoint, but they had the understanding and the partnership with Punch Out To Go where they were able to confidently take on the project. Another benefit we have with them is their partnership with Nexus. Um, we did our own individual research uh, on hosting and Nexus ranked up near the top for Magento hosting everywhere. We looked in surveys and uh, various user forums and with them being tightly integrated with Nexus, uh, it took all the load off of us for having to create and set up our own hosting environments uh, the configuration for the hosting itself, and also the configuration and setup of the Elasticsearch instance. Um, we logged into Nexus, created an account. Well, we put in our billing information, and we set up uh, credentials for DC Cap and handed it over to them. And short of going in and reconciling my monthly billing, I don't do anything at all with hosting, which is very nice for me. Uh, their FlexiPim product was very new when we first started looking at DC Cap, and as limited as it was when we first looked, it was exactly what we were looking for. We had looked at other PIMs that are on the market, uh, even open source, such as Akinio and some other PIMs that are available, and they were just way overkill for what we wanted. We, we, want, we wanted a place to go in and house all of our product data and information and specifically the things that P21 could not hold. And the FlexiPim product does all of that for us. It holds everything we need. That we, haven't, we haven't run into any limitation on what it can do for us. In fact, it can do a lot more than what we're using it for. It's, it's grown into uh, a, a product that is more similar to some of the larger PIM products that are out there now. 
but for us, we just needed something basic and easy and also had a direct tie into Magento um, to make the management in, in to, I won't say single pane of glass, but it, it's all integrated in. The FlexiPim data is connected into our Magento site with their own plugin. And we will log into a portal uh, that's outside of our website to manage all the product data. And all of our changes automatically flow back into Magento from the plugin. And of course, as any company, uh, we were looking for something that was going to be cost effective for us. We, we had like I said three different partners that we were looking at. Um, DC Cap was the only one that could bring in all of our wants could handle the customization and they were also the lowest price of the three that we looked at. So it was the trifecta of easy decision making. Uh, as far as our implementation goes, having been through B2B seller, AmeriCommerce, ECC, we had a pretty good feel on what to expect going in. Part of that, um, we're much better organized for our implementation with DC Cap. In the past, um, we learned lessons from uh, not having organized photos, not having organized categories. All those lessons we had learned prior, we were able to bring to the table with our implementation here. So it made things a lot easier and smoother. Um, but the one point I want to drive in is how organized the implementation is with DC Cap, so much more than any of the others that we had used in the past. Um, they use a program called, or a web portal called Basecamp. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very easy to use, almost user forum-like uh, feel to it that makes it very simple to go in and create a case or an instance, if you will, of an enhancement or a feature or a bug. And then you can follow the conversations all the way through. You can watch DC Cap loop in the correct resources that are needed. We'll, have, we'll start in um, a feature enhancement with one person at DC Cap that'll get it to the point to where maybe it needs data from Chloris or we need to bring in a piece from FlexiPim and they loop in those resources real time, seamlessly, all within the, the instance of the request, and you can follow it. There's no need for status updates. There's no need for wondering what's going on. Um, you can see what's being done as it's being done within the interface. So that, that, was, that was very nice and a, a, a welcome change from our experience in the past. Another key differentiator with this implementation was uh, Alex Deckard, which is the UX designer for us, who was really able to take all of our list of wants and what we thought we wanted for our designs and was keeping the things we requested in the spirit that we were requesting them. But at the same time, he was able to bring in uh, recommendations for best practices. Um, we could do this, but if we shifted it one way or another, or we added this other piece of information, it would help with our SEO. Um, he brings a vast experience um, and knowledge for wholesale distributors and or distributors in general and knows mostly in generic terms what differentiate, differentiates a distributor customer from say an Amazon customer and how, how they shop and what things are important and what things to prioritize in the design. And lastly, I would like to bring up that, I mean, I mentioned it's efficient. We implemented our DC cap Magento 2 P21, FlexiPim, Chloris, probably in a span of three to four months. Um, it may have taken a little bit longer than that, but anything that went over that was because of our customization with 
that we have required with the tax exemption certificate and the punch out to go. But the basic site itself was up and running in probably about three months. And that includes design, everything from starting from wireframes to finished proof of design. Comparing that with our implementation with ECC, I believe we were probably in the eight to nine month range uh, for the same process. So I can't say enough about um, the efficiency and the ease of the implementation process. It, it, it was great for us. Now what I'd like to do is bring in uh, Alec Daniel, who is our digital uh, marketing designer who handles all things with our website with design and SEO. And he had almost complete control over that process. And he can give you a little bit of a insight on how that went for him and with working with DC cap. Hey, thanks Kendall. And uh, thanks Tim for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. I just kind of wanted to piggyback off of the previous implementation slide and talk about that from a design standpoint. Um, this is my first site with Moody price. However, I do have experience with a couple dozen websites and sort of a project management role. So I'm familiar with the process um, and I had a lot of expectations. I knew that DC cap would have us covered on the technical side. Um, you know, they specialize in the middleware, the chorus. Um, the reason we went with them was because of the punch out integration. And there were a lot of technical things they brought to the table, but I just, I have to brag on them. I did not expect this pleasant of an experience um, when it came to our design on this website. So I really, when this all started, I expected to be given a list of templates. You know, they say here, pick a few of these, um, we'll roll with this. Um, that's not what we got. Um, what we got was we worked with Alex. We had a discussion, you know, what goals do you have? Um, where are your customers going? How do they get there? How can we improve this process through design? So in doing that, we got a data driven design and call to actions um, using our previous websites, data and analytics. Um, so we went through and we did this page by page for the entire site and the process was just incredible. Um, great experience. Um, not what I was expecting and better than I was expecting. Uh, so we were able to using this method sort of meet any unfulfilled needs we had on our homepage with like in reference to call to actions and stuff. Um, so we wanted to really focus on that data and in doing so we sort of came to the conclusion that we had three top sections of our site we wanted to focus on. That's where our customers were going. We wanted to help them get there. So we went with, you know, request for quote, our locations pages and our services pages. Cause that's really our big three at Moody price. Um, and a lot of people ask me why as an e-commerce site, do you have your main call to action as request for quote? Um, and the reason is we looked at the data and, you know, a lot of our products are modular. Uh, they are project specific. They're very specialized. Um, and so that's why we decided to go with our, uh, request for request for quote as our main call to action. Um, and again, data driven decision on that. We get a dozen, sometimes two dozen requests for quotes on a good day with probably about a 50% conversion rate. So not a web sale per se, but a sale, which really is all Kendall and I care about at the end of the day, um, convert those customers. Um, so that was the homepage locations, same thing. We went through the data with Alex. We knew that for local SEO reasons, we wanted to create sub pages, which we did not have on our previous website. Um, so each branch would get its own page that we could then talk about um, the service areas that we cover there. We wanted to include, you know, those high quality photos, we wanted to show off our inventories, our vehicle fleets and other capabilities we have at these branches that customers would otherwise not know about had they not seen it. Um, so that was a big thing for us. And that was something that we were really able to capitalize on. Another one was our services pages, because we're not just a, a sales company, we're, we're big on services. Um, and just like locations, we wanted customers to be able to see the services we provide. And if you go to our services pages now, you can actually, we, 
we actually took photos of a lot of our services and, and customers can go there and see, okay, um, these guys seem pretty proficient. They have, you know, they do this a lot. And so they were able to provide that with us. Um, so that's sort of the design. Um, I kind of wanted to touch on SEO a little bit and that in our previous site, I spent months working on our metadata, you know, our, uh, descriptions and page titles and stuff like that. We have over 5,000 product pages. Um, and that was something that I'd really worked on. And when we originally started looking into this migration, we were told that this is going to be wiped. This is a complete rebuild. You're not going to have this stuff. Well, that wasn't the case with DC cap. They went ahead and made that happen for us. They got all of that metadata that I had created and spent so much time on, and they were able to put that into our new site, which saved me. I mean, hundreds of hours worth of work. Um, so I was very appreciative of that. Um, there was also a issue on our previous site. And I guess it was a setting in Magento one where every URL ended in .html. And so what I was having to do was go through and 301 redirect all of these old pages ending in .html to our new pages that didn't have .html. Um, I was, I don't know, I spent a couple of weeks post launch on our website on this, on this website. Um, and was sort of mentioning it to DC cop and they were like, well, we, we can write a script for that. So they wrote a script for that and saved me again. I would have had to do this for five, 6,000 pages and uh, done deal. That was it. Um, so that was a great experience. Uh, moving on to our site speed. This was a huge issue for us. Our previous site was so bloated. Um, as you can see here, we had about a seven and a half second to 10 second page load time. And that was our average. I mean, this thing was bloated. It was slow. Uh, currently with our new site, we're at about one to two and a half seconds. And one of the reasons for that is DC cap came up with a design for us. Um, we have a lot of products. I'm going to use something called an FBZ, for example. Um, it looks the exact same. There's about, let's say 10 variants of one FBZ with a quarter inch difference or something like that. So they all look the exact same. Um, just with minor, minor differences that vary from pro, uh, part number. Um, in our previous site, we were showing photos of every single one of these variants, which obviously slowed down our website massively. Um, and with this new one, they came up with a design, you know, I worked with Alex and, and Megesh, who's great. And they uh, basically showed the one photo at the top and then listed the part numbers underneath, which sounds simple. Um, and obvious now, but you know, we hadn't thought of that and it just saved us so much time, uh, space, and it really retained a lot of customers who were exiting our site right there due to load speed. So um, this has been a great experience for Ken and I. We're very thankful that we found DC Cap uh, and that we were able to work with them and we really look forward to this partnership moving forward. Thank you so much, Alec, for the, for the presentation. Uh, as of right now, we don't have any questions. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and submit them through the Q and A um, tab. Um, if we proceed, then you know we could have Alec and Kendall. They could even answer them uh, through chat as well. So just going to keep it open for a little bit as I uh, present some more housekeeping rules. But yeah, go ahead and submit your questions right now, and then we, we could get going. But uh, you know, from the poll, you know, remember to to sign up for the poll. So as of right now, it looks like about probably 50 50 is either running e-commerce or, or not. So if you're not running e-commerce, so let us know if we could do anything to help you. So we are, we are, um, you know, within the ecosystem and we have a lot of partnerships too. So I know a lot of you guys are looking to network as well. If you're, if you're looking to network uh, after this session, so around 1230 PM, 1230 PM Eastern time, we're going to have a networking session. So it won't be on this webinar platform. We're going to move it over to the meetings and you'll be able to talk with, uh, some of the industry uh, leaders out there. So, and you know, there's a lot of components to to e-commerce. We have, you know, we have Nexus for hosting. We have uh, Punch Out to Go for the for the punch outs. But um, as Alec and Kendall were talking about, we you know we we also partner with Avalara, which was the tax tax company. We do a lot with search. So you know, there's a lot of companies out there for in terms of e-commerce, and you know, we're willing to. Uh, even sync you guys up with them. So if you have any questions or anything like that, just send me a direct chat or even uh, email. My email is timothyd at dccap.com. And just let me know and I can sync you up with the right partners or whatnot. So, so thank you so much for that. As of right now, actually, we do have one question. Let me see. So this is from Barry Hallman. Can DCCAP share how many P21 customers DCCAP serves? So yeah, we, we could definitely share. So I'll have one of my sales reps. They could even answer that. So yeah, keep the questions coming. So and then let's see, for, from John, for your non-punch-out customers, 
with terms, were you able to let customers check out without making a payment? Uh, absolutely. Um, we have three different checkout channels, if you will. Um, we have different levels of customers. We have what we call anonymous, which are customers that do not exist um, in our Magento site and they do not exist in P21 or anywhere. And those folks are limited strictly to credit card checkout. Then we have the next tier, what we call our P20, our Magento customers, which these are folks who order online uh, from us. They have elected to save their account information in Magento, but they are not in P21. These are customers typically from outside of our general sales area, but they come to us for items that they can't find locally on, and repeat orders. Then we have what we call our P21 customers. These are the customers that have an account on the website that is directly tied to a P21 account or P21 contact uh, within their system. Once you get to that level, we open up a second and third uh, method of checkout. The second being um, a Moody Price account. So if they have account terms with us, whenever they check out, uh, it actually takes the order, brings it into P21, and it is charged to their, their terms, their open account that they have with us with P21. And then of course, the third would be for the next tier of customers that are using punch out, which that order process actually doesn't directly uh, create a transaction on the website. It simply returns that information to their procurement system. And then we receive a purchase order from that customer uh, via EDI or REBA or one other method that actually goes straight into P21. And that transaction does not occur at all within the, Magent the Magento space. Thank you, Kendall. So John, hopefully that answered your question. And then for Barry, you know, we just answered it too. So we have 20 plus P21 customers. So we, we do a lot with the P21 Worldwide Users Group. You know, unfortunately, you know, the, the conference is going to be uh, virtual now, right? We we're supposed to meet in Dallas. So, you know, and then we do a lot with the Lake Erie Users Group. So if you, uh, if you want even more information, we, our last e-summit on April 28th was, was with the Lake Erie Users Group as well. So if you don't have any information, just go ahead and send me, send me a, a chat and then we can even talk about that. So. All right. Thank you so much, guys. So, yes, yeah, stay on, stay on board. So, we're gonna get going with the discussion panel too. So, uh, you know, uh, one final note. So, you know, if you're looking to network, we we will be opening up a networking session. So, uh, look for that link. I'll, I'll post it on the chat box as well. So, well, thank you, thank you so much, Kendall. Thank you so much, Alec. Uh, it was a great presentation, and thank you for the kind words. It, it has been an enjoyable experience just working with you guys. So. But the closing note, so, you know, thank you again to our sponsors with Nexus, Punch Out To Go, and DC Cap.